what grade would you give President Trump in his first 100 days in office when it comes to foreign policy? I think I would give him sort of a pass. In other words, this is a president who came into office without a great deal of experience in foreign policy. Now, a lot of experience as a business person in many countries. But was not really familiar with the basic issues, with the alliances that we have, and sometimes with the uh, specific dangers that require strategy and that uh, still do. So as a result, it's been a learning period for him. Now he's had the benefit of, I think, good appointments for Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, others, and those have been helpful to him. Sometimes as he's made assertions, uh, they've stepped back and said, now listen, this is really the way that it needs to be. And uh, he's been accepting many of those corrections or suggestions. So we still have some time to go, I think, before it's fair to evaluate his, his work. And uh, I hope that uh, the learning process will be accelerated because it's a dangerous world, a lot of problems out there. Should people in Indiana be concerned about the recent aggression from North Korea? Of course we should be concerned about North Korea. North Korea has been building potential nuclear weapons now for some years. Now they started fairly modestly, but now things are moving more, more rapidly in terms of the testing that they're doing in the area. Sometimes they're shooting missiles out to sea toward Japan, uh, trying to develop really a submarine-based missile situation. Worse still, we believe that they are attempting uh, to get some missiles that would have fine tips at the end in which there would be nuclear material, enough really to cause extraordinary damage wherever they might hit in nearby South Korea or Japan or worse still in the United States. And given the number of times the North Koreans have mentioned the United States as a target and objective, it, it certainly brings to the fore the need to deal with this dilemma. Now, the dilemma comes down to the fact that the Chinese, the next door neighbor, the country that has by far the most influence on North Korea, has thus far not wanted to move, or has moved very, very slowly, if at all. Uh, the Chinese do not want to see a collapse of the young leader and that state in North Korea. They don't want to see people flowing across into China. Uh, nor do they want to see a situation with South Korea comes up to their border. So uh, they do not anticipate they would ever be a target of North Korea. In the same way the United States is singled out by uh, the leader in North Korea. But we, we have a problem here in terms of trying to find the Chinese, quite apart from the South Koreans and the Japanese and others, uh, to work with us and to find at least some reason why North Koreans would change the, the intent and the thrust of their program. And it's not clear at this point that we have found that. Can the U.S. appropriately respond without help from China? Well, the United States uh, could respond, of course, without help from China. But the dilemma of a military response by the United States is, uh, unfortunately, a potential for terrible destruction in South Korea. If you have visited Seoul, South Korea, the uh, capital as I have, you're, you're amazed how many millions of people live in only a short distance from the North Korean border. And the, uh, the, the problems there in terms of the loss of hundreds of thousands of lives almost immediately is awesome. Uh, there could be likewise uh, calamities in Japan, not too far away, with testing going on all the time with North Korean missiles. So we, we have that predicament to think about in terms of close allies of, that depend upon us, and uh, we are con thinking about that. This is why we really need to have the Chinese very much in the talks. What's at stake? Well, what's at stake depends upon whether the North Koreans stop building and stop testing. Now, 
in the case, of, for instance, of Iran, uh, the international community did negotiate uh, a halt, essentially, to their nuclear program for a 10-year period of time, maybe for 15 years under some circumstances. But in the group that uh, negotiated with Iran uh, were Russia, uh, China, Great Britain, France, and the United States. In other words, all of these countries. Um, we've not yet been able to formulate a group like that to deal with the North Korean situation. Now, likewise, in the case of Iran, they were hurting from a, a good number of, of situations uh, already in their economy because we had put sanctions and so had some other countries on their exports and imports and their banking and what have you. When the sanctions were lifted, uh, life was much better for the ordinary Iranian, although some observers are not certain how much better, but uh, still, it was a relief. Now, in the case of North Korea, there have been many sanctions by the United States and some other countries, but this does not seem to have had the same effect upon the leadership. In other words, the North Korean leadership may be perfectly uh, willing to let some people starve or to have great privation uh, while it tries to keep its own power structure, its own regime. Which country do you think is a bigger threat, North Korea or Russia? Currently, North Korea is the bigger threat because they have indicated that uh, they're thinking about attacking the United States and pretty explicit about that. They are, are moving ahead without great deal of care for what other nations are saying or doing about it. Um, they seem to be obsessed with the fact that uh, their future depends upon the success of this nuclear program and or the pressures that it exerts on other countries. Um, now, notwithstanding all of that, the, uh, Russia is a potential problem for the United States because it does have the second largest amount of nuclear weaponry. But at the same time, the possibilities for working on some problems with Russia uh, are more substantial. For example, the United States and Russia attempted to rid uh, Syria of chemical weapons a while back. Now, we thought we had succeeded. We found out not completely because the Syrians used some more uh, of these chemical weapons. But still, it was an unusual period of cooperation in which you have Russians and the United States taking these weapons out of Syria. It indicates areas that we could work on together. And um, so our diplomacy with Russia has been to try to find these areas and to make certain that uh, there are not mistakes made in terms of misunderstanding. What do you think President Trump's actions say about the U.S.'s power and his grasp of it? Well, I, I think the president um, observes that we are a very powerful nation. Uh, but at the same time, uh, as I've indicated before, his, his knowledge about world conditions, this includes our alliances, specific problems in various countries that are important to us, uh, the, the, the problems that we're going to have with various types of action, this, this type of experience might have come if the president had served uh, in the cabinet or as a senator or a member of the House of Representatives or an ambassador or some other position which led him to be a part of intelligence briefings, a part of the general buildup of knowledge that uh, someone who has the authority our president has would normally have. Uh, so the president is probably learning quickly, uh, but at the same time, he has uh, personal characteristics that are just a part of the way that he likes to express things that are upsetting to many Americans and many people around the world. Uh, for instance, he does not appear to be in favor of world trade. He does not favor, really, of immigration policies that would be favorable to the United States generally. He keeps talking about such things as a wall uh, between Mexico and the United States, and thus subordinates the NAFTA Treaty, which has Canada, Mexico, and the United States 
a re remarkable treaty, I believe, uh, over the course of time, uh, subjugates that to a lot of problems. Uh, in essence, he may change his mind, as he has on many other occasions, but um, for the time being, this creates some anxiety in our country as well as countries around the world. Does the U.S. risk losing its status as a superpower? No, I don't believe we're going to lose our status as a superpower. We really do have the most formidable armed forces. We have a fleet that really covers all the seas. World trade is really dependent upon the American fleet keeping all the sea lanes open, uh, keeping opportunities open as a stance. We're the only country that can really transport people all over the world to various problems if we choose to do so. Last question, Senator. What do you make of the military airstrikes in both Syria and Afghanistan? Well, the military airstrikes came within one week and they were a surprise. Now one can suggest that um, after all, the Syrians were supposed to have given up their chemical weapons. Suddenly here these weapons uh, come out and they were used to kill a lot of uh, children and old folks and everybody else that were uh, on television. Uh, it was a horrible thing for them to do. So uh, the, the president's airstrike, uh, in, in response to all of that, many Americans felt was well deserved, that is the, the Syrians deserved the strike. Um, likewise, with regard to Afghanistan, the Taliban in, uh, the, uh, in, in, in Afghanistan continue to be a terrible problem. The Afghan army is just not able to contain them. Uh, there was a situation, at least, in which it appeared that a great number of the Taliban were bottled up in a particular area where an airstrike would be especially effective. Um, that was probably more, more dubious on our part because the question in both cases is, what is our strategy toward Syria? What's our strategy toward Afghanistan? We do have troops there on the ground. Should we send more? And if we do, uh, do we anticipate that the Pakistanis are going to help us with the Taliban to keep them out of there or other countries help? Um, that hasn't been explored and it needs to be.